Chair, um, uh, thanks to our guests. Uh, I'll be uh, leading up the questions tomorrow, so I suppose more time to, to spend then. But in the short time, if we can have as short an answer as possible with it, while still addressing the issue, uh, it's an impossible task, I know. Uh, vote 34, um, it's probably not surprising that my eye was drawn to O'Devney Gardens and to, to the amount spent there for in 2018 and 2019. The figure was 1.79 million and 3.79 million in 2019. Could I just first of all ask, does that relate specifically to the uh, social housing uh, homes built outside of the HLI, or does that spending include uh, uh, HLI-related spending? So, so the spend there was, was related to the social housing, so obviously they're the first element of the site that are being developed, um, and they're going to support the delivery of the wider yeah. site, so this phase delivery in terms of the social housing, so, so that expenditure is around supporting the design, the development, and there's obviously phased payments on the site also. On the okay, so there's some elements that relate to yeah. the larger to the larger, larger project. Yes. Uh, obviously in July 2019, there was a... A new council elected that would have had, I suppose, a different approach to to uh, to housing, wanting to seek more public housing on on, on public lands. Um, and um, in November 2019, uh, the council voted to approve the HLI deal, and in parallel, made an agreement with Bartra to purchase 30 percent of the stock uh, for what would be a, a cost rental model. Um, I know the new government is committed to a cost rental uh, approach, and, and I wonder at this early stage, um, is the department supportive of the the programme which the council seems to be progressing? They've appointed two AHBs um, to, co to to consider the matter of what what the details and are the par are the department supportive of that at the, at this stage? Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah look, I really appreciate your support on that because I believe it was it was key to secure an agreement um, on that site. Um, I suppose then that draws the comparison then to what happened only a week ago um, in, in regard to Oscar, Oscar Trainer. Um, I suppose given the length of time between uh, the decision on, um, on O'Devney Gardens in November 2019 uh, and then the vote in 20, November 2020, um, I suppose it was a full year and it would have been known that the arrangements that were put forward for O'Devney Gardens just barely got through the council at that, at that point. And I suppose were the department concerned that the time and effort that they had put into the scheme um, would result in, in the failure that we saw? Because obviously it's very disappointing all around, but there are questions about why in that year both sides didn't manage the project to a point where we got a proposal which was at least as good as the O'Devney Gardens Mark II, whereas actually it looked like we got a proposal that was um, worse than the O'Devney Gardens Mark, Mark I. So I suppose the question is around the managing of that project in that year and whether the absence of an affordable housing scheme, um, which was a key element in, in the uncertainty around this and the absence of an affordable rental scheme, which we still don't have, um, played a, a major part. And while there was no government for a good chunk of that year, and I accept that, I suppose the question is what, what, what did the department do in that intervening period to maybe focus on ensuring that we didn't see a failure, the failure that we saw? I suppose it, it will certainly be helpful to um, to projects in situations like that to uh, for us to bottom out over the coming months our approach on uh, on affordable schemes and 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 on cost rental. Um, however, I think um, I think through a lot of the department's existing schemes, there was um, I think the uh, DCC were very much drawing on those as part of um, constructing that particular arrangement. Um, I suppose look. Uh, one of the, the major issues from what I could tell um, in, in looking at that situation was it was probably the, the mix of delivery, um, possibly more than some of those, um, some of those other issues. Um, and, uh, and, and, and look, I, I suppose that the situation is we've got a council who, who has a, a particular view, as they're, they're, they're absolutely entitled to, um, and, and yeah, you've asked, you know, were we, were, are we disappointed? I suppose if we look at, you know, potentially 500 and, or sorry, 850 something units, um, when we look at numbers and, and our, our drive to deliver and, and, and house people, I suppose, uh, I suppose, look, 
we will have to learn lessons from this and we'll have to, uh, we'll have to look Ms. at the Ms. future. Ms. earlier described the, the, the process of having a mix of incomes. And I, can I say the main reason for the failure of this project, I believe, is the uncertainty around the 50% private ownership that could easily become... Uh, private rental through a HAP or, or, or a REIT. And uh, I think in order for the department to secure more agreement across all local authorities, I think providing models of uh, funding which provide certainty around what is actually going to be the outcome will be the secret of, of delivering on, the, on these houses. And I don't believe it's an unreasonable sort of left-wing driven mod, uh, approach to this. I actually think most of it is around the uncertainty of what we'll actually get for these deals and the lack of transparency in terms of mixing infrastructure with unit costs. And I think if the department focuses on those, we'll make sure that we have further spending on, on projects like O'Devney Gardens to come. So thank you very much.